And he picked her up, he picked her up by her throat and her face, and he slammed her on the ground. And then he's like, get this little bitch and go take care of her, take care of your daughter. It was another day in the office as a, with, another, with another defendant. It felt like there was sort of an audible gasp. I watched a judge do something that I don't think they do very often. So here's a story of this judge in Oklahoma City who had a profound moment of conscience. My name is Kenneth Watson. I'm a uh, district judge, judge here in Oklahoma County. But the story is part of a much larger story that our colleague Alex here has been reporting. My name is Alex Campbell, and I'm an investigative reporter at BuzzFeed. So I've been reporting this story for about six months. Uh, I've been looking at cases around the country where a mother is put in prison for failing to protect her children, uh, even though she herself was abused. The laws are different in every state, um, and the penalties are different, but basically the whole idea is that if you knew your child was being abused uh, and you weren't able to prevent, get the child out of that situation, uh, then you should go to prison too. Um, now how long you'll get put away uh, will depend a lot state to state. Um, in New York it might be up to a year, in Oklahoma it's up to life. So the story begins with a woman named Victoria Fantharanth. Victoria was sent to prison after her boyfriend killed her three-year-old daughter, even though she was essentially a victim of her boyfriend too. Judge Watson presided over Victoria's hearing when she agreed to a plea bargain. And even when she entered the plea of guilty, I don't remember anything about her or about the plea. I don't, I don't hear much about the facts in an agreed plea. And hers was an agreed plea. So it was just another day in the office? It was another day in the office as a, with, another, with another defendant. In the fall of 2012, Victoria's abusive boyfriend, Freddie Mendez, beat Victoria's three-year-old daughter, Alexis, to death. So here's a reading from Victoria's testimony during Freddie's trial where she describes the murder. Freddie is still spanking Alexis, and I go get my son, and I come back, and he's sitting there, and he pushed, and he kicked her across the room, all the way to the window, and he kicked her, and he... Is he saying anything to her? He's cussing at himself. He's getting pissed off, and he's kicking her, and he's hitting her in the chest. What's he saying? He's, you fucking little bitch. He's sitting there cussing and kicking her and hitting her. And I told him he needs to calm down. Why doesn't he go outside? My son is trying to look because he can hear Alexis crying and screaming. And he's trying to look and I'm covering up his eyes. And he's sitting there kicking her and pushing her around the room. And I'm sitting there yelling at him. And he picks her up after he's hit her in the chest, kicked her in the stomach. And she's swinging around the room across the window. And he picked her up and he slammed her. When he picked her up, he picked her up by her throat and her face and he slammed her on the ground. And then he's like, get this little bitch and go take care of her. Take care of your daughter. So when Victoria testified in Freddie's trial, she was already in prison. The plea deal she had agreed to was for a 35 year sentence for enabling child abuse. When Victoria testified during Freddie's trial, it caught everybody off guard. We have a girl who's already made a plea. Uh, she's in, in the penitentiary. Uh, we don't know anything about her or about the circumstances of this case. And she's probably the first, the second, third witness. And she gives us a detailed description of what happened and how it happened. And here's just one of the many stories Victoria told about how Freddie had abused her prior to the incident when Alexis was killed. What happened? Well, he starts... We start getting in the argument and he starts grabbing me and starts punching me in my face and punching me in my eye and he shoves me into the pool and I try to get out and he shoves me back in the pool and starts hitting me and dragging me around and I'm screaming and crying at this moment and he tells me to shut up and finally he gets Alexis and we go inside the house because the baby is sleeping. Ma'am, is this the first time Mr. Mendez has put his hands on you in a manner like this or has it happened before? It's happened before. Did you tell anybody about that? No. Why not? So I was already in a domestic abusive relationship, and I was embarrassed. I mean, there were tears in the in the in the jury uh, for the, from the members of the of the jury because it's it's heart wrenching. She continued relating details of this particular incident. So you told us what he did. What happens next? Well, I go upstairs and we're still arguing, and the kids are in the room, and he continues to hit me and beat me in the room. What room? 
in his bedroom, upstairs in the far back, and were arguing in the closet. At this time, I had been shoved all the way up into the closet because I'm screaming and crying loud. What happens next? He starts punching me and hitting me, telling me to shut up, and then he demands me to go make him a sandwich, and I'm covered. My clothes are wet at this point, so he sends me downstairs to go make him a sandwich. The DA, having heard that, I could see he was being affected by by her testimony. We, at this point, think we have seen it all, but things things happen which uh, give you a different perspective of life. And, th- and I think what happened with Victoria and what had happened with Victoria uh, was something that neither one of us had expected. <clears throat> Even before the jury came back, I went out and I talked to the uh, DA and I, and, I, and I basically told him that I don't have any authority to do anything at all in this case because it's an agreed plea. I said, if, if you can get your office to agree to let me modify this, I will do it. I will set this on my docket to modify it. So the prosecutor agreed and a new hearing was called where the judge would be able to change Victoria's sentence to a length that he thought was more fair. I gave it a lot of thought before I heard anything additional. I knew that a modification was in order because that was what I had, had suggested. I just didn't know how much. And uh, um, the more I heard, the more I was convinced that she needed to be out. Judge Watson modified Victoria's sentence from 35 years to the two years she had already served, and she was set free. Alex was there for this hearing. It felt like there was sort of an audible gasp, as I recall. I I watched a judge do something that I don't think they do very often, which is look at an inmate who's been sentenced to 35 years in prison and set her free after only two. I spoke to the district attorney's office recently and they they said that they they were not expecting her to be set free and that they were under the impression that she would, her sentence would be reduced to 20 years and they seemed okay with that. I don't think they were pleased with uh, the judge's decision. When I thought about her spending the next 35 years locked up in an all-women's prison. Just, it just, it just, I wanted to know, I wanted to find out what I could do, what I could do to make it better. 